Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real-life American English. Today we're going to learn to avoid some common mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to use on and in correctly. I will give you examples and explanation. I cannot say I will give you examples and explanation. Examples is countable, so I need an S. Examples. But explanation is also countable, so I need an S. Explanations. You have to say I will give you examples and explanations. Or you can use the article and an explanation. Because explanation is countable, I have to use the article and explanation or put an S at the end and say explanations. The best option is the plural form with S. I will give you examples and explanations. This is correct. This is also not correct. So you will learn what's the difference between these confusing prepositions. Let's do it. I cannot say you will learn what's the difference between these confusing prepositions. When I say what's, the contraction of what is, you're making a direct question. I can make the direct question and say what's the difference between these confusing prepositions, but I cannot say you will learn what's the difference. We have some options. You can change the structure and say what the difference is. You will learn what the difference is. But I think it's best just to eliminate what's. It sounds better. Just eliminate what's. You will learn the difference. You will learn the difference between these confusing prepositions. That's the best way to say it. This is also not correct. Come on! Why? What is going on? We have a vocabulary marathon! Get out of bed now! So let's go! Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel for our vocabulary marathon. Vocabulary marathon? Marathon? The word is pronounced marathon. The third syllable has an O and is pronounced with the sound ah, like hot and stop. Marathon. Marathon. Not marathon, but marathon. Example, I have never run a marathon. Marathon is countable, so we say, uh, I have never run a marathon. What about you? Have you ever run a marathon? Very good. This is also not correct. How is her jacket? Her jacket is on backwards. Her jacket is on backwards. Backwards actually means that the front part of her jacket is in the back and the back part of her jacket is in the front. The word is not pronounced front or front. The word is pronounced front. The O makes a different sound here. It makes the short uh sound like cup and up. Uh, uh. It's a relaxed closed sound. Uh, uh. Fr, front. And the T at the end is a stop T. You don't have to say front. You don't have to release the T. Just put the tongue up and stop the air. Front. Front. Use that relaxed vowel. Uh, uh. Front. Example. He's at the front door. He's not at the back door. He's at the front door. Let's practice. Where is he? Is he at the back door or the front door? That's right. He's at the front door. This is also not correct. You can use lids for jars, for plastic glasses like this one. For plastic glasses like this one? Plastic glasses? This does not exist. If it's made of plastic, it's a cup. So you can have a plastic cup. If you call it a glass, it has to be made of glass. So this is a glass. A glass is always made of glass. There are no other kinds of glasses. There are no plastic glasses. If you call it a glass, that means it's made of glass. And if it's made of plastic, then it's not a glass. It's a cup. But what she's holding in her hand is not a plastic cup. And it's not a glass. It's a paper cup. It's made of waxed paper, so we just call it a paper cup. So let's review. This is a plastic cup. This is a glass. And this is a paper cup. Let's practice. What is this? That's right. This is a plastic cup. And what is this? That's right. This is a glass. And the last one, what is this? That's right. This is a paper cup. 
This is also not correct. I come October 21 and I leave October 25. I check in on the October 21st. I check out on the October 25th. I cannot say on the October 21st and I cannot say on the October 25th. When you give dates with both the month and the date, we have to eliminate the. You cannot use the. We say on October 21st or on October 25th. We cannot use the in this case. Example, Halloween is on October 31st. Not on the October 31st, but on October 31st. Let's practice. When is Halloween? That's right. Halloween is on October 31st. So can we ever say the first or the second when talking about dates? Sure you can. Just eliminate the month. Example, I have to pay my rent on the first. If I pay it on the fourth, it's late. So I can pay my rent on the first, on the second, or on the third. But I can't pay it on the fourth because then it's late. Let's practice. When do you have to pay rent? On the first or on the second? That's right. You're supposed to pay rent on the first. And when is your rent late? Is it late on the fourth or on the third? Very good. This is also not correct. What about this? That is called bruise. Bruise. Bruise is countable. So I cannot say this is bruise. I have to use an article. I have to say a. Uh, this is a bruise. It's one countable thing. I have to use the article a. Uh, this is a bruise. I can say he has. He has a bruise. I cannot say he has bruise. It's countable. So I have to say a. Uh, he has a bruise. Let's practice. Does he have a bruise? That's right. He has a bruise. It looks pretty bad. This is also not correct. This is liver. I cannot say this is liver. Liver is an organ and it's a countable noun. So I can use the article a uh, and say this is a liver. Or I can use the article the and say this is the liver. When talking about organs in the body, you can use the or a. Uh. Example, I have a heart. It's one, it's an organ, so I say, uh, I have a heart, and he has a heart. And if I say the heart, example, the heart is a very important organ. Maybe the heart is the most important organ. I guess it's your opinion. But we can say the heart in this case. Now back to liver. Liver, without an article, is meat. For example, beef liver, calf's liver, with no article, it sounds like you're talking about the meat that you eat. But if you're talking about an organ in your body, say, uh, this is a liver. Or I can say the, this is the liver. This is also not correct. This is stomach. This is belly button. That is Adam's apple. That is chin. This is heel. All these things are body parts. So we have different options. I cannot say this is stomach. I cannot say this is belly button. I cannot say this is Adam's apple. I cannot say this is chin or this is heel. These are all body parts. So you can say a, uh, this is a chin. This is a heel. This is a belly button. This is a stomach. This is an Adam's apple. You can also use possessive. My stomach, his Adam's apple, your belly button, my chin, her heel. So we have to use an article or we have to use possessive when talking about body parts. Let's practice. What is this? Is this a belly button? That's right, this is a belly button. Let's practice with stomach. My stomach hurts. Does your stomach hurt? Very good. He has a big Adam's apple. Let's practice. Does he have a big Adam's apple? That's right, he has a big Adam's apple. And what is this? This is a chin. Let's practice. Is this a chin? That's right, this is a chin. And I don't have one heel, I have two heels. 
These are heels. And these are heels. The things on your shoe are also called heels. And these are also heels. You can call them high heels, high heel shoes, or just heels. I never wear heels. What about you? Do you wear heels? Very good. This is also not correct. This is a dryer. This is not a dryer. If you say a dryer, I think of the machine you use to dry your clothes. That's a dryer. When you do laundry, you use the washer and the dryer to wash your clothes and dry your clothes. So what is this thing called? It's called a blow dryer, or you can call it a hair dryer, but you cannot call it a dryer. So I can say she has a blow dryer, and I can say she has a hair dryer. Either one is fine. Let's practice. What does she have? Does she have a blow dryer? That's right, she has a blow dryer. And what is she doing? Is she drying her hair with the blow dryer? That's right, she's drying her hair with the blow dryer. This is also not correct. This is a hanger. I cannot say hanger, hanger. The word is pronounced hanger with no hard g sound. Hanger. Words with N-G-E-R have two pronunciations. Sometimes they're pronounced with the hard g sound and sometimes they're not. Keep watching for a full explanation and find out why. Today we're learning all the pronunciations of N-G together. When you see NG together, it can have different pronunciations. So let's take a closer look. When you see NG at the end of a word, it makes a nasal sound. It makes a sound in your nose, like this. Mm, mm. There's no G sound when you see NG at the end of a word. It makes a sound mm, like young, strong, and working. When you have ING at the end, it makes a sound mm, working. Not working G. There's no G sound. It's the sound mm, working. Now, sometimes when you see ing, you hear working, working. That's also correct pronunciation. You can say working or working with the n sound. Now, what happens when we change young and strong to younger and stronger? Or the youngest, the strongest. When we change these adjectives with er or with est, we're going to pronounce the g sound the hard g. So it's younger, ger, with a g sound. Stronger, the youngest, again with the g sound. The strongest, gist, the strongest. Example, he's younger than his brother. He's also the youngest in his family. Let's practice. Is he younger than his brother? That's right, he's younger than his brother. Is he the youngest in the family? That's right, he's the youngest in the family. But what if I change these words? I can change hang to hanger. And I can change sing to singer. When I change these words with ER, I don't pronounce the G sound. It's just the nasal M linked together with the ER. Together, hanger, hanger, hanger. There's no g sound. I cannot say hanger. I cannot say singer. It's hanger and singer. Example, he has hangers in his closet. Let's practice. Does he have hangers in his closet? That's right. He has hangers in his closet. Not hangers, but hangers. Example, she's a good singer. She's a really good singer. Let's practice. Is she a good singer? That's right, she's a good singer. Not singer, but singer. Now let's look at NG when we have an L after it. When you have an L after it, it makes the G sound, like English. Make the hard G, English. Or jungle, tangle, and angle. These are pronounced with the hard G sound. Example, monkeys live in the jungle. Make the hard G sound, jungle. So you have the nasal m sound and the hard g, jungle, goal. Monkeys live in the jungle. Let's practice. Where do monkeys live? Do they live in the jungle? 
That's right. Monkeys live in the jungle. Let's practice with tangle. I can say she has a lot of tangles in her hair. Or I can describe her hair and say her hair is tangled. Using the nasal ng sound and the hard g. Tang, g, g. Tangled. Her hair is very tangled. Let's practice. Is her hair tangled? That's right. Her hair is very tangled. Let's look at this word. Mingle. Using the nasal ng sound and the hard g. Together, ming go Mingle. Mingle is a verb. It means to talk to people, especially at a party. If you're at a party and you're not talking to people, I'll say, go mingle. You need to mingle. You need to go talk to people at the party. He's at the party, but he's not talking to anybody. Does he need to go mingle? That's right. He needs to go mingle. Now let's compare these two words. We have angle, spelled L-E, making the nasal sound M mm, and the hard G. Angle. This is a right angle. It's 90 degrees, so we call it a right angle. And then we have, with E-L, angel. In this word, the G makes a J, J sound, like jump and juice. Together with the N, a regular N sound, not the nasal N, but the regular N. Angel. 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 This is an angel. Let's practice. Is this a right angle? That's right. This is a right angle. Use the nasal N plus the hard G. Angle. Angle. This is a right angle. Let's look at more words where you have NG in the middle and you make the hard G sound. Like language. Language. You have the nasal N sound. Lang. And the hard G. Guage. Language. Language. I have one language, two languages. I speak two languages. How many languages do you speak? Very good. Also this word, single, single. The NG makes the nasal N sound plus the hard G. Single, single. I'm not single, I'm married. What about you? Are you single? Very good. Also, we have these two words, hungry and hunger. They also make the same sound with the nasal sound and the hard g. Hunger. Hungry. Remember the difference. Hungry is a description. I'm hungry. I want some food. And hunger is a noun. It's the thing. Hunger is a problem for many people. They don't have enough food. They have to live with hunger. It's a noun. And we have this word, tongue. The U-E at the end is silent, so we pronounce it like young, tongue. You have only the nasal sound, mm. There's no G. It's just the sound, mm. tongue. This is my tongue, tongue. Example, he's sticking out his tongue. Well, I think it's a boy. It's an emoji. He's sticking out his tongue. Let's practice. What is he doing? Is he sticking out his tongue? That's right. He's sticking out his tongue. And when we have ER after NG, we have N-G-E-R, it can be pronounced different ways. Example, danger and anger. So with danger, we hear the J sound. Danger. There's no nasal sound. There's no N. It's a regular N. Dane. Jer with the j sound like jump and juice. Danger. But we see this word and it's anger. Let's talk about anger. We have the nasal n sound plus the hard g, the g sound. Together, anger. Anger. Anger is a noun and angry is a description. I can say he's very angry. We use the nasal sound n plus the hard g. Angry. He's very angry. He needs to control his anger. Anger is a noun. He needs to control his anger. Let's practice. Is he angry? That's right. He's very angry. Does he need to control his anger? 
That's right. He needs to control his anger. And we can compare these two words, ginger and finger. The NG is in the middle. It's before ER, but you have different pronunciations. With ginger, we use the J sound, like juice and jump, J -j -j. and the regular N, gin, jur, ginger. People like to drink tea with ginger. Let's practice. Do you like tea with ginger? Very good. And finger. Finger. We see the nasal ng sound, ng, plus the hard G, the g. Fing, ng, 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 g, g, ger, finger. I have ten fingers. Let's practice. How many fingers do you have? Very good. This is a plunger. Plunger. Use the regular N and the j, j sound, like juice. Plunger. This is a plunger. I keep my plunger in the bathroom. What about you? Where do you keep your plunger? Very good. I keep my plunger in the bathroom too. And this word is stranger. I can use it two ways. I can say, don't talk to strangers. Strangers are people that you don't know. So I tell my children not to talk to strangers. I can also compare and say, he's strange, but this other guy is stranger, meaning he's more strange. I use er to compare. He's stranger. He's stranger than his friend. It means he's more strange. He's weirder. He's stranger than his friend. Let's practice with stranger as a person. One stranger, two strangers. I tell my children not to talk to strangers. What about you? Do you tell your children not to talk to strangers? Very good. Usually when you see N-G-E, it makes the N-G sound. Like orange or exchange. You make the N sound, not the nasal sound, just N. And the J, like juice. J -j -j. Together, orange, orange, or exchange, change, or exchange. You have the same sound. N -j. This word too, challenge, makes the same sound. The regular N plus the J sound. Challenge. What is a challenge? A challenge is something that's difficult but good for you. Like practicing English, learning English, learning a second language is a big challenge. It's difficult, but good for you. Let's practice. Is it a challenge to learn a second language? That's right. It's a challenge to learn a second language. Now let's talk about NG plus S. When you have S after NG, it makes the nasal sound M, mm, but it also makes a little G sound, but not a hard, strong G. These are bangs, bangs. There's a little g, but it's not bangs, g, it's softer, bangs. I don't have bangs. I don't have hair to hear. Those are called bangs. She has bangs. Let's practice. Does she have bangs? That's right, she has bangs. And you can have one fang or two fangs. These are fangs. A snake has fangs. It's the two teeth. The two sharp teeth are called fangs. Use a long A plus the nasal sound, mm, and a soft G. Fangs. Fangs. And the S is making a zebra sound, zzz, but it's soft. Fangs. Fangs. The snake has fangs. Let's practice. Does the snake have fangs? That's right, the snake has fangs. One thing, two things. So NG plus S, it's a soft G. I have many things to do today. I have a lot of things to do today. Things. What about you? Do you have a lot of things to do today? That's right, I have a lot of things to do today. And we have this word, cling, cling. It's a verb. It means stick to or hang on to, hold on to, cling. If I change it with an S, I hear clings, clings. It's a soft G. 
Not clings, but clings. Example, the baby. The baby clings to his mother. He holds on to his mother. The baby clings to his mother. Let's practice. Does the baby cling to his mother? That's right. The baby clings to his mother. I can change the word cling with Y and make an adjective. Clingy. Clingy describes a person that holds on to somebody. It's not a good thing. Example. She left her ex-boyfriend because he was too clingy. He was always holding on to her, wanting to be near her all the time, and she didn't like it. She thought it was annoying. So she broke up with him because he was too clingy. You hear the sound, mm, mm. Only the nasal sound here. No good. Not clingy, but clingy. Mm -y. Clingy. He was too clingy. Let's practice. Why did she break up with her ex-boyfriend? Was he too clingy? That's right. He was too clingy. Or this word, tangy. We have the same sound. It's the nasal sound only. Mm, tangy. Tangy. It's not tangy. It's tangy. Tangy is a flavor when something is strong, maybe acidic. That's a tangy flavor. The flavor is tangy. I like barbecue sauce because it's very tangy. It has vinegar and a lot of spices. Barbecue sauce is very tangy. What about you? Do you like tangy food? Very good. But then we see these two words that have the same spelling, N-G plus Y, but they're pronounced differently. Example, dingy and stingy. These two words have the regular N sound, N, plus the J, like juice. Together, stin G. Together, stingy. Or din G. Together, dingy. This wall is very dingy. It's dark and dirty. Someone needs to clean it. Let's practice. Is the wall very dingy? That's right. The wall is very dingy. Somebody needs to clean it. And the word stingy. Stingy is an adjective. It describes someone who wants to keep everything for themselves. Somebody who doesn't like to share. This boy has a lot of cookies, but he doesn't want to share his cookies with anybody else. He wants to keep them for himself. So he is stingy. He's very stingy. Let's practice. Is the boy very stingy? That's right. He's very stingy. And this word is lounge. Lounge. It makes the regular N, N, plus the J, lounge. It follows the same pattern as orange and change. N, J. It's a regular N, N, plus the soft j sound. Lounge. A lounge is a place to relax. Like at an airport, they have a special place where you can go and relax and have a drink. That's a lounge. He's having a drink in the lounge. Let's practice. Is he having a drink in the lounge? That's right. He's having a drink in the lounge. So let's review. NG has five different pronunciations. First, we see long with the sound ng, which is a nasal sound, ng, long. But then you have longer, where we have the hard g sound, longer. With a nasal sound, ng, plus the hard g, longer. And we have the j sound, the regular n, ng, plus the j sound, lounge, ng, lounge. And another one, when you see ing, you have two sounds there. You can say working with the ng sound, but you can also say working, working. So the ng can make the n sound. N, working. I'm working today. Or I'm working today. And we have ngs. Remember with ngs, it makes a soft g, g. Bangs, bangs, bangs. Things, things, fangs. Soft g. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.